trigonometry and trigonometric ratios are so interesting because they're so fundamentally geometric. We don't have to worry or rely on numbers. It's all about the glorious world of shapes. <laughs> trigonometry also has many practical uses such as sound waves, modeling tides, and every maths teacher's favorite, plotting the course of Ferris wheels. I have a friend who lives in a building in the CBD. I want to know at what times during my journey on the Melbourne Star, I will be at the exact same height as her. To solve a problem like this, I need to understand the fundamentals of trigonometry and trigonometric functions. And that is the mathematics we're going to explain to you today. The core of trigonometry is a trigonometric ratio. For a certain angle in a right angle triangle, the ratio of certain sides will always be the same, no matter how large the triangle is. In a right angle triangle, the sine of the angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine of the angle is the adjacent over the hypotenuse and the tangent of the angle is the opposite over the adjacent. If we take this triangle, we can use it to describe the positions of the point on what we call the unit circle. This is a circle placed on the Cartesian plane so that the radius is equal to 1. Let's say we want to describe the position of this point on the plane. The height of this point will be equal to the sine of the angle since the radius or the hypotenuse is 1. The same principle applies for the horizontal positions of the point, which is equal to cos of the angle. These principles work for any angle on the circle due to the different laws of symmetry. Let's take a look at this unit circle a bit further. In the first quadrant, the y-coordinate or the height of the triangle is the sine of theta. In the second quadrant, the height of the triangle is the same as the first quadrant. In the third quadrant, the height is the opposite of the first quadrant. And in the fourth quadrant, the height of the triangle is negative of the first quadrant. If we think of the angle as a variable, our x, it's possible to make a trigonometric equation. For example, y equals sine x. This plots how the height of the point changes with the changing of the angle, starting at 0 degrees measured here. The cos graph is tracing how the horizontal position of the point changes as the angle gets bigger. These graphs are periodic, meaning they repeat after full rotation of the circle. Well, I want to know when I'll be 90 meters in the air during my journey on the Melbourne Star. To model my journey, we can use trigonometric functions. Because I'm measuring my height in the air, we should start with a base graph y equals sine x. In our unit circle, the principal axis, the line which the centre of the circle sits on, was y equals zero. However, the centre of the Melbourne Star is 60 metres in the air. Therefore, we need to transform our graph by adding 60 units so that the principal axis is now y equals 60. The Melbourne Star is 120 metres tall and its lowest point is at ground level. This means that I will be oscillating 60 metres up and down from the centre of the circle. This makes our amplitude 60. The normal period of a circle is 2 pi. However, a full revolution of the Melbourne star takes 30 minutes. This means that we have to transform 2 pi to 30 by multiplying our x values by 2 pi on 30, which simplifies to pi on 15. Our current model starts at the zero angle mark. However, I can only get into the car on the ground. This means that I have to move my graph forward by a quarter of a period. So we translate the graph 7.5 units in the positive direction of the x axis. This gives our final equation. Y equals 60 sine pi on 15 x minus 7.5 plus 60. This means we can solve our equation. Yay! Using our calculator, we can see that I will be 90 meters in the air at 10 minutes and 20 meters into my journey. So we hope that you can see that trigonometry and trigonometric modeling really isn't that scary. It's a lot more than just memorizing scary tables of ratios. In fact, it's really just a bunch of triangles.